Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. In at number 9, it's Palace of Magic. This was released in 1987 by Superior Software for both the Acorn Electron and the BBC Micro, and it's a puzzle platformer style game uh, bearing a strong similarity in terms of the gameplay to the earlier game Citadel, but in my opinion very much its own game in its own right. In fact, Palace of Magic is one of the earliest games that I can remember playing on my BBC Micro. I'm fairly sure that I got a copy of it in the year that it came out, and I can remember spending many hours trying to solve its various puzzles, and having to lean quite heavily on some of the uh, micro user articles back in the day to give some pointers, because of course there was no internet back then. So uh, it's a game that I have a lot of love for. The eagle-eyed amongst you will probably have noticed that it's my avatar on the Star.Forums, forums, uh, the main character from uh, Palace of Magic. Uh, and I'm hoping that I can uh, share that enthusiasm with you now as we dive in and take a look at Palace of Magic. All right, let's start it up. There we go. Now, this is an excellent, excellent splash screen. I really, really like it. It's, it's quite different from the sort of house style of a lot of the superior software splash screens. Um, it really does look like um, an effort to create a painting uh, using uh, the 8-bit the colour palette. And I think it looks fantastic. I love the way it fades away as well. It really gives me a tingle every time I see it. It takes me back to the early days of playing this game. And here we have it, Palace of Magic by Martin Howard. Uh, it all looks very serene here. We've got some rabbits and some clouds and a nice little tower there. Doesn't it look all gentle and lovely? Well, let's get into the game and see what it's really all about. So this is our character here. He can move left and right and he can jump as well. It makes a rather curious little boing sound as he goes up and down. Uh, you'll notice at the top there it says main palace and I've got a coordinate of zero colon zero. But if I pop over to this room on the right, uh, you'll notice that uh, we've got uh, the change there to one, uh, one comma zero. If I just pop down this rope, um, now it's gone to one colon one. Uh, so that really helps you sort of understand where you are in the game. Um, now, in common with a lot of these, uh, or a lot of the best uh, of this style of game, you can see areas of uh, the palace that you can't necessarily reach within the screen that you're in. So you can see up here, I've got this quadrant over in the top right where I'm not quite sure how to get into it. Um, now, one of the aspects, by the way, of Palace of Magic that I absolutely love are these, these little creatures going up and down, the eyeballs on springs. And in fact, all of the creatures in Palace of Magic, pretty much, are just weird. Um, I mean, they, they, they're, just, they're just so bonkers. Like, if I go up here, you've got what I think is a spaceman bouncing around on the roof uh, up here. Um, and we'll see plenty more of creatures of weird and wonderful varieties as we go through this review. Oh, wow, that, that room is scary business. Look at that. that. I mean, there is absolutely no way you're going to be able to clear through that without losing an awful lot of health. Um, because, actually, I'll just demonstrate quickly. Um, if you do um, lose too much health in one go, you see it, it actually helpfully sends you back um, to the start of the room so that you can't actually sort of lose all of your health in one go, which I think is quite a nice touch. Uh, you'll have also realised that those um, swords on the wall are not just decorative. You can't jump in front of them without losing health. Um, now, we've already been up to the rooftop, so I think what we'll do is we'll just explore a bit further down here. Now, these little gaps on the floor, um, these are areas that you can drop items. Uh, you can only carry up to two items at a time. That's one of the limitations of Palace of Magic, and uh, so therefore inventory management is, uh, as with a lot of these style of games, uh, very important. So you can do things, for example, like you can pick up a key here, um, but if I decide I don't want to carry it anymore, I can put it down uh, onto the mat. But I'm going to I'm going to take that key and avoid these uh, crazy springs and go over here. Now, I mean, look at that thing. What is it? <laughs> what is it? I mean, one of them's the the bouncing spaceman. But what what is that other thing? Is it? It's like a chicken on roller skates. Quite bizarre. Oh, hang on. That was that was poorly timed. Hang on. Uh, yeah, there we go. Let's go through here. And ooh, there's another item over there which I am definitely going to need. So I'm going to grab that. That's my cross there. So you can see my, my inventory is full now, so I can't pick anything up. The top right of the screen in the corner, you can see the two items. Um, I could put the key down, I could put the cross down, uh, or I can take both of them. So I'm going to take both of them because um, uh, it's not my first rodeo. I've played this game quite a few times, so I do know um, where to go next. Uh, just. Oh, no. Gosh. Right. 
hang on. Oh, oh dear me. Right, right. Well, I think uh, at this point I might be coming pretty close to needing one of the top hats. So top hats uh, in Palace of Magic are how you can recharge your energy. But, uh, well, I'll say that. Let's see if we can uh, progress a little bit further without uh, without taking a top hat. Ooh, and he comes all the way up to the pillar there. Now, it's not, it's not technically speaking, colour clash, but Pal Palace of Magic does have um, a way of uh, indicating that something is behind you. So you, you see this kind of way he changes colour when he goes past the pillar. It's actually using a bitwise operator, the XOR operator, for those of you who are interested in that kind of thing. With the east exit. And now we've got, got chaps on flying carpets down here. Amazing. Now, you may have noticed those gates as well. You can see one down there, uh, bottom left. That is um, a gate that you need one of the keys for. And the colour of the key obviously has to match the gate, but it's a little bit more subtle than that. So the key has two colours. You can see the one I've got is actually green and white. And the, uh, the sequence of the colour has to match the gate precisely. So it's not enough. Um, to simply have say, oh, well, that, that gate is green and white. It needs to be green at the top and white at the bottom for the key to actually work. But we shall see that in action later on. Now, this guy is really going for it. Look at him. Now, I just don't know if I can make it down that ladder or not, but uh, we'll just try and get down there. Oh, there we go. Now, down here, uh, it's rather interesting. If I go down here... Oh! Well, you can't see anything. Now, that's uh, that's deliberate. It's not a bug in the game. The reason being that in order to be able to see anything in the dungeons, you need a candlestick, which I am obviously not carrying at the moment. And that highlights another aspect of Palace of Magic. You see, the, the items that you have, some of them, like the keys, um, will get used up when you open uh, the door that the key fits, and then you don't have to worry about carrying the key around anymore. But uh, other items, such as the candlestick, which we don't currently have... Oof, um, you have to hold on to them for as long as you want to be able to use their effect. So for the entire duration of time, for example, that I might want to wander around the dungeons, I need to be carrying the candlestick. This is very Monty Python, isn't it? Look at that rabbit. <laughs> I didn't think that that would really be a, a real menace, but uh, but it is. I mustn't get too close to the rabbit. Now, I believe that the actual storyline of Palace of Magic suggests that uh, our main character has been shrunk uh, shrunk down to a small size, which is why um, things like rabbits, for example, pose more of a threat than they uh, probably would if he was life-size. Although that would suggest that everybody else, including this little priest here, um, have also been shrunk. But uh, anyway, because I'm carrying the cross, I can approach the priest and come through into the church. So you'll see that my cross has now been used up and I don't have to worry about carrying that around anymore. Um, because once I give the cross to the uh, the priest, he doesn't come back, which is good. Um, now, there's a gate there, which I don't have a key for, but I'm going to make my way up here. There's a halo over there. Let's see what was down there. Hmm, I think that takes me out again, so I'm not going to go there just yet. Really not doing too well on the health front, so I do feel like I should... Uh, claim this top hat and there we go nice little health boost now that is um, a fire pit so or a spike pit so I mustn't land in there you just need to go just right to the edge and uh, jump over which I've managed to do and I can go moseying on over here now I believe ooh, that wasn't so good a little bit of a bump there but uh, anyway I've got hold of the, the halo now which going to take with me. Saves me having to come back to the church. Um, the halo is needed for uh, another one of the obstacles later in the game. And I'm going to come down here along this series of ropes and make my escape. So I think you can already see what a well put together game this is. Um, you know, it's, it's very, very graphically pleasing. Um, it's got a real sense of mystery about it. Ooh, I've got another key here. Hmm. I think I'm going to switch that for this one. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I really, really like it. It's uh, it's really evocative for me. I mean, I suppose partly it's evocative of my childhood because of the amount of time I spent playing the game. Um, but no, I mean, I think that aside, you know, even if you take the nostalgia out of it, I just think it's objectively a really good game. And um, it... it it's, it slightly upsets me when uh, I have heard people say, oh, well, you know, Palace of Magic is just a, it's 
just a poor man's Citadel. You know, why would you play that when you can play Citadel? But, you know, as good as Citadel is, don't get me wrong, um, I, I think Palace of Magic really holds its own. I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant little game. In fact, it's not little. Oh gosh, run over there! It's not. It's actually not. It's not little at all. It's uh, quite, quite, quite the, quite the opposite. Uh, it's um, very extensive. If you've ever seen a full, a full map of uh, Palace of Magic, you will certainly uh, appreciate that. Um, yes, little it is not. Now I can't recall exactly what happens next. <laughs> um, I don't want to get that top hat just yet, and I don't have the right key for that door. So I think I'm going to need to uh, do a little bit more research elsewhere. Let's clear over here. And I think actually uh, I might go down this passageway underneath. Um, gosh, that, oh my lord. Ah. Oh, oh dear, that was, that's a lot of health wasted there. Now I've got the right key, so you can see yellow and red. And that's cleared that one out of the way. And there's the candlestick, which is the all-important candlestick that I need in order to be able to uh, navigate the dungeon. Ah, oh, well, that's rather handy. Could do with one of those. Now, you'll notice that there's a percentage uh, up on the uh, top right as well, uh, which shows that I've completed 7% of the game. I actually think that's a lovely touch, uh, because it is fair to say, as much as I am a huge, huge fan of these puzzle-style games, um, when it comes to... Uh, progress made it's not always obvious you know quite how far or close to the end you actually are um well, i want to come back down here sorry i was trying to find uh, the entrance to the dungeon that we found earlier i think now uh, yes of course it was down here with this guy going at a feverish pace Oy. okay you just one don't don't know oh. We didn't manage that did very well but anyway suffice it to say we have got the candlestick the all-important candlestick so now when I go down here I can actually see and there's mysterious things going on down here I, it's um interestingly enough I used to think that that thing moving around the bottom which I think is supposed to be a fireball let's face it um, I used to think it was a pumice stone because it kind of looks like the shape of a pumice stone that we used to have in our bathroom. Um, but anyway, unfortunately, the problem I've got here is that although I can now see in the dungeon, I can't actually make any progress because, well, it's just not possible to get up there. In fact, I think I've come to the end of the dungeon. So what I actually need to do now is find the start of the dungeon, which I believe, memory serves, is actually back in the church. So, ooh, let's try to avoid getting run over again. One, two, three. We go. And uh, yeah, we will make our way through the woods, the east wood, past the uh, the dangerous bunny rabbits, and uh, the uh, the eyeballs on springs, of course. My favourite villain in Palace Magic because they're just so bonkers. <laughs> I don't know whether it's Martin Howard or one of the designers that came up with that, but yeah, eyeballs on springs. Why not? Why not? Now you see the priest has not come back, which is good news for us. It means we can go straight in. And where I think, if I remember correctly, if we take um, if we take this rope down into the cellar, which is a lovely room. I love the cellar. It's uh, it's got a little tree growing in it here, and you've got a water tank over here. It doesn't really do anything. I quite like the colour effect when he goes into the water. That's quite that's quite clever. Um, but anyway, I've held on to this green and white key for a reason, because it is the entrance to the dungeon from the other side. Da -da. So, the mysterious dungeon. Um, now, it's, uh, it's fair to say that if you're, if you're new to Palace of Magic, you might think, oh, I'll go down there, I'll grab that top hat, and then fall down the hole. You must not do that, because underneath there is um, a bed of spikes, and as soon as you land on it, you just keep landing on it, landing on it, landing on it, because it's too high to be able to get out from. So I'm going to go down this way, and I did lose a bit of health, but not to worry. We can now make some progress into the dungeon. And down there looks like, I don't know what that is, a dismembered horse's head bouncing up and down, perhaps? It's hard to say. Palace of Magic is never entirely clear what some of these bad guys are supposed to be, but uh, I, I love them. They're just so weird looking. Okay, now this is an interesting one. 
Got some there. Uh... Oh, didn't quite manage to hold onto that rope there. It's a bit of a shame. Ooh, got a water bowl here. Yeah, now you see, notice what happens if I if I do put my candle down here just temporarily. Um, if I go up here, oh dear, I can't see anymore. I can see in here because that's where the candle is, but uh, I have to be carrying it in order to be able to continue seeing into rooms beyond uh, where I leave the candle. So very important to keep it on our person. Okay, I've got the crazy horse's head again. Uh, just gently nudge over here and oh, that didn't work very well. But there's a top hat, so never mind. Ah, now unfortunately I don't have that key, which is a bit of a shame, so I can't go through there. But I can come back up here, I've got another one of the pumice stones, or fireballs as they probably are supposed to be. Um, this is... There we go. Come through here, oh my word! Right, well this really does look um, vicious, I'm not sure if I can... I can really go through here, can I? I mean, that feels like an impassable room. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it through there, so let's uh, let's double back and see instead if I can get the uh, the blue and cyan key. It does unfortunately mean we're going to have to retrace our steps, but never mind. Uh, oh, hang on, let's go through there. And head over here. Of course, as is the case with these uh, puzzler-style games, you do have to uh, do a fair amount of back and forth if you are to complete the uh, the game. Oh dear, I didn't judge that one very well. So, okay, hang on. I'm going to wait for that to come down. And over we go. And, oh, oh dear. Didn't quite manage to avoid them together. Now this is going to be a challenge. That rope is really going up. By the way, why are the ropes going up and down like that? Does, does anyone know? I mean, it seems like a very strange system of of ropes that they would uh, that they would move up and down like that. But uh, anyway, we're going to climb up here. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. There is this is the path of no return. I don't think I can go back. Yeah, there is no. There's 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 no. <laughs> this is it. I can't. I can't get back out that way, can I? Hmm. Oh dear. Uh. Don't think I have got much choice other than to try risking the room of death that I saw earlier. So uh, I suppose we're going to have to give that one our best shot. Hmm. Yes. Well, this could be the end for me. Um. Let's see. Uh. This is a shame I didn't bring that key with me. I think that's where I went wrong. Um, if I'd had the key, that was the right way to go, but sadly I, I don't, and um, yeah. I, I mean, who am I kidding? I can't get past this lot. No. Clearly not. Game over. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, I uh, was not planning for this review to be a, a complete walkthrough of Palace of Magic, so I think for the, uh, the remainder of, uh, of the uh, review, what we'll do is we'll have a little... We'll have a little explore and uh, just see a bit more of uh, what's, uh, what you can find in this mysterious palace. So we're now on the rooftop, which is populated by these bouncing spacemen. Um, rather crazy. I've got a rope over here, which uh, I can go up. Now, you see, this is a bit of a tricky one. So you can't, you can't actually get up there. Now, there is another item that I haven't managed to collect just yet, which is the, uh, the flying boots. And they actually give you the ability to, to fly. Well, um, but uh, yes, I don't. I don't have that yet, so I'm going to have to just uh, move on, move on. Oh dear, he's getting a bit close. Doesn't uh, understand private private space. Now there's a key here which we didn't get last time, so I'm going to take that. Oh goodness, they're very aggressive spacemen, aren't they? Now I think that key is actually for a door that I have come across before now. So although it's not. Uh, Probably the right sequence. As I say, I'm not doing a full walkthrough. I might consider doing that for a, a long play video in the future, but um, at the moment I'm just uh, keen to showcase Palace of Magic. As I say, I'm a big fan of the game. Um, now, I think I can... Oh dear. Bouncing jug, <laughs> if that's what it is. Uh, let's, uh, let's go and see if we can 
find the door for this key. There it is. So now we're making some, uh, some some further progress into the passages. Let's see where we go. Pretty sure I can get over there. Yeah, there we go. So there we are. So I'd be interested to hear from uh, anyone uh, watching this review what your thoughts are on Palace of Magic. Um, as I am always interested in people's thoughts generally on these games, but particularly in the case of Palace of Magic, I would like to know uh, if there are other fans of the game out there. Um, I, mean, I wouldn't be at all surprised if I read lots of replies saying, yeah, I prefer Citadel. But, you know, um, it would be nice to know whether people feel that Palace of Magic has a place in the pantheon of games. Uh, would you have brought it in as high as this? Um, that's uh, something I'd be also interested to hear. Uh, it's definitely a personal choice, this one. It's, uh, you know, as much as anything else, I, I just really enjoy the game. It's got very, very fond memories for me, and so it's not... Uh, there was not really much I could do but bring it into the top ten. Um, but uh, I suppose the, uh, you will have to be left with the question, well, what about Citadel? And indeed, what about Citadel? Well, will it feature? Will I have taken Palace of Magic as the definitive game and decided to ignore Citadel? What do you think? I'm not giving anything away. Unless, of course, you're watching this video many years into the future, in which case you'll already know what the uh, the remaining places are in this countdown, and uh, it won't be any mystery at all. But uh, anyway, for the for now at least, it's uh, it's an open question. Uh, incidentally, on the Citadel point, um, the story that accompanies Palace of Magic says uh, says that the um, evil wizard who has shrunk us down to this tiny size uh, is actually called Caldetti, which uh, is an anagram, of course, of the word Citadel. So uh, yes, the game designers were very much aware of the uh, probably the the debt, if you like, that they owed to uh, Citadel as the earlier game. It's definitely one that's uh, helped inspire uh, inspire this game. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I've, got, I've got very much health left, so I'm just going to see if I can manage to nab myself another top hat. Clear this gate as well. Takes us. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Hey. Ah, there, yeah, there's the ladder for. It. I was thinking. I'm sure I've. <laughs> I'm sure there was a top hat that I could access from here. There we go. It's giving me a little bit of extra health that might just help me last for a few more minutes um, while we explore the East Palace. Now, there's that boot I was talking about earlier up in the top right there. That helps you fly. And I'm kind of. I wonder if I can get that actually. No, of course I can't because I can't get up here. See, this is the frustration, you know, I can see it, but you'd have to enter the room from a different a different position in order to be able to claim the uh, the flying boot. So, let's see where else we can go. Mind the, eye mind the eyeball. Advice for life there. Tower base, eh? Okay, now... There we go. Oof, that was tricky. Right, go for that row, and then we'll go up here. Ah, yes, I remember the East Tower. And I think if we go up this way, oop, yeah, you can go back down this way, and you can claim this item, which is a hole in the wall. Um, must admit, in a few years, I'm not quite sure I remember which. Uh, which bit of Palace of Magic you use that for. Um, I have completed the game, but um, it was quite a few years ago that I did, and I'm a little bit rusty now. I can't quite remember exactly which items you use. This is, of course, I probably don't even need to point it out, a game that is... Oh, that was curtains for me there. A game that is uh, impossible uh, to complete without having um, a good map to uh, be able to guide you on your way. Um, Obviously, there are several maps available. There was one published in the micro user, a beautifully hand-drawn map uh, that uh, somebody sent in. Um, but there are also screenshot-based maps as well that you can get online these days. Um, or you can make your own. I mean, I, I've actually had a go um, at making my own Palace of Magic uh, map. I've got it somewhere. Ooh. Ooh. That's right. I quite like that feature. Um, yes, I've got it somewhere on my Dropbox, I think, hidden away. I might try and dig that one out at some point. But uh, yes, without a map, you really you really don't stand any chance of being able to complete the game because it's, uh, it requires you to remember far too much. 
However, I think I'm going to call it a day here because I have certainly uh, shown a reasonable amount of the game uh, in the sort of general amount of time that I usually do for these reviews. And uh, I think you'd agree with me, um, even if Palace of Magic isn't necessarily one of your favourites, um, it is a game that um, really does deserve uh, its place in the in the countdown because it's just really well put together. It's really fun to play. It's beautiful to look at. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think it's, a, it's, a, it's an outstanding game. And uh, coming out in 1987, maybe it's one that uh, I've helped bring to your attention if you hadn't seen it before. But we're going to leave it there. Uh, this is number nine, Palace of Magic. And uh, hope you've enjoyed the review and that you will join me for the next one in the series, number eight, which will be coming to a YouTube channel near you very soon. And until then, goodbye.